Hi, welcome to a GAM Lab tutorial for protecting vSphere using PowerProtect and Data Domain. In this demo, we will be using vSphere 6.7, Data Domain 4.0, and PowerProtect 19.1. Step 1 Preparing the Data Domain. First, let's create a new local user for PowerProtect. Next, under ddboost, we configure access for our clients. And then we add our new PowerProtect user. We complete this by enabling ddboost and create a new storage unit. Step 2. PowerProtect Initial Configuration The first time you connect to the PowerProtect after installation, you will be required to complete the Initial Configuration Wizard. We will use the Evaluation License for now. Enter a new admin password. Configure Time Zone and NTP. Enter and test email configuration. and wait until the system is ready. Step 3. Adding the vCenter Log into PowerProtect Data Manager and click on Asset Sources where you can add your vCenter connection information. Click on Verify, Accept Certificate, and click on Save. Step 4. Adding the data domain. Under Storage, select Add. Choose Data Domain System and complete connection information. Click on Verify, Accept Certificate, and click on Save. Next, select your data domain and choose Discover. Finally, choose Manage Storage Unit and validate that your storage unit is available from here. Step 5. Deploying the proxy. Under Protection Engine, choose Add. Enter VM proxy details and click on Save. You can verify from the vCenter that your new proxy VM is being deployed. Wait until the proxy is ready. Step 6. Adding Protection Policy Under Protection Policy, click Add, give it a name, select Crash Consistent, Add your desired virtual machines. Click on Backup. Choose the retention period and schedule. Click on Next and Finish. Step 7. Testing file level recovery. Now that we have our first backup completed, we will test the file level recovery. Under Recovery, select Asset and choose a VM for recovery. Click on View Copies, select the storage target, choose a backup, click on File Level Restore. Specify that you want to restore to the same VM. Enter credentials for that VM. Click on Start Mount. Select Files to recover. Select Restore Location. Here we choose to recover a file in a new folder without overwriting the existing one. Finally, we connect to the VM to validate that the file has been recovered. Step 8. Testing Full VM Recovery. This time, we are going to recover the full VM. After selecting the backup, 
we click on restore. Here we choose to restore the original VM. From vCenter, we can see that the original VM is getting shut down. Then, the recovery process starts. Once completed, the VM is restarted and we can validate that it is back to its original state. Thank you for watching. For more information, please contact us.